Well, hello there, everyone, and welcome back to a holiday festive edition of Back Row Seating, the podcast. It's a wonderful lifetime. Boy, it sure is. So, this movie... Oh, my goodness. Okay, so... Uh, cards on the table. I've seen this. This is... I've seen bits and pieces of it. Because Lifetime Movie Network has a Roku TV channel that I'll sometimes have on just in the background during the holidays. And I was just, like, doing random things. And I was watching bits and pieces of this movie. It looks amazing. One, one, just the movie itself looks incredible. In, like, a good-bad kind of way, of course. But, like, looking at the details behind it and the filmmaking, it's sketchy as hell, man. So, we're going to get to that. Uh, I went to the end of this movie just because I wanted to check. This movie has no Wikipedia page. So I wanted to see who, like, the director was. This film, I went through the credits twice. The director, I didn't see any director anywhere. They want their name hidden. They want nothing to do with this. This name, the name of this film, you already just saw. It was called Christmas Unleashed, right? Well, that's not the name anymore. They have changed the name. Now it's called The Dog on Christmas after the fact. They've already named it. In the film itself, they put... Christmas Unleashed, and then after the fact, they changed the name so that it would, like, throw people off the trail. It is insane. Okay, so, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna sit and watch the movie, and we're gonna talk about how sketchy it is. I mean, we, we've pretty much already gone over how sketchy it is. The director isn't, if you check IMDb, the director is, in fact, Namisha Mukherjee. Um, you know what, they're doing opening credits, so they might, it, it might show up here. But I checked the the ending credit. Okay, look, she loves that dog, by the way. Keep that in mind, because that's important later. Okay, so the writer was okay with their name being put up there. It's a good boy. Okay, so there is a director credit, just not at the end of the film. <laughs> the director and writer, they wanted nothing to do with this in the end credits. I didn't think to look at the beginning for opening credits. I was like, oh, well, let's just check the end. Look, this dog is like a partner. She is in love with this dog. Again, I need to clarify that. In the film the film world, they're giving us not-so-subtle clues to how important this dog is to her in her life. Now just keep that in mind, because we're going to find out. Oh, no, not Grams. Oh my god, okay, this is a Lifetime Christmas movie, so you know who she's going to meet. An attractive white man, probably from her past, and they're going to fall in love by the end of the movie. You already know how this plays out. It's like all of them. Except sometimes it's Mario L Lopez. <laughs> I'm so excited. I wanted to watch this last year, but by the time I could find a copy of it, it, w it was like Christmas was over. I love how they filmed that, and then they filmed her grandma, and then they were like, oh yeah, this is totally cell phone quality. <laughs> Notice how they subtly, grandma said, I don't know how many years I have left, they subtly cut to the dog. <laughs> we don't have much time left. I don't even know how easy it is for you guys to find this. Because I went to the, the, the Lifetime, mylifetime.com slash movie slash Christmas Unleashed. It's a doggone Christmas, by the way. It's not that name anymore, but they haven't updated it. It says watch without signing in, but there's nowhere to watch it on the Lifetime site. So I don't even know where you could find it. I mean, I found it. So, I mean, it's possible. I'm not going to tell you where, <laughs> but it's possible. Okay. Okay, so here's some pretty drone shots. Um, Namisha is not, uh, like, she's done other things. Nothing I recognize, but she is a very prominent, like, well, I don't, I don't want to say prominent, but, like, she's a story to director. A lot of shorts, a lot of TV series. And I believe they're Canadian. Border security. Canada's front line. Good boy. 
Oh my god, that would be hilarious if, like, she runs into this guy and one of his exes is also in town and her name is Megan. That'd be very amazing. Where was the dog? I mean, I know he was off camera and, like, waiting for his cue being held up by somebody in the production crew, but dogs don't act like that. The dog would have been on her as soon as she came up. They'd have been like, oh, new person, hello! It's another else in love. Oh wow, that's not gonna come up in the future. This this is a lifetime movie. It might not it might not actually do that. <laughs> Chekhov's gun might not apply. <laughs> oh you Okay, yes, that is proper dog behavior. Hell yeah. She has a good grandma. Oh, where's Henry? Oh no! Oh. <laughs> that was legitimately, like, suspenseful. Oh, remember, the lock doesn't catch. Oh, no. You know what? I have to give them props. They mentioned it, and but there wasn't a shot where she closed the door and walked off, and then, like, there, we cut to a closer shot of the door and watched it, like, swing open slightly. They didn't do that. I appreciate that. That's, that's like, dumb person filmmaking. When, you're, when you think your audience is dumb, you... Oh, well, here, let's do a close-up shot so they know. That being said, whenever the dog gets out, they're probably going to be like, Oh no! I told you the lock doesn't catch! And the audience is like, we know. <laughs> oh, damn. How did the dog get out? He's going to be busy on that for a few days. Well, no, it's a lab. It's a yellow lab. So, no, it'll, <laughs> it'll be like an hour. What? Oh, Grandma. Sounds like I'm talking to my grandma. <laughs> Vanessa Lachey. Okay, so she is Filipino. Well, she was born in the Philippines. Her mother is Filipino. I was only I was only wondering because her grandma looks like <laughs> I'm noticing some ethnicity uh, changes, which is fine. She could be adopted. I was also curious because Vanessa Lachey, was she or is she married to Nick Lachey? Spouse Nick Lachey, married 2011 to present, three children. Good for them. Stay out of it, Nick Lachey. Where my, where's my The Soup Bros at? Hashtag Joel McHale. Overruled. Yeah, that was one heck of a movie. She's lying. Oh, Grandma. 
Oh, get it. Oh, get it. There's a dog. What? That sounds like folklore to me. Oh, Grandma. He doesn't- he doesn't look like frickin' Errol Flynn, but he's handsome. Oh, <laughs> it's going to be magical, all right. Okay, that's a yellow lab. There is no way the dog would have left that freaking bone. Ah. I'm waiting for the the plot to begin, but I guess they're doing they're setting up everything. By telling, not showing. <laughs> oh, remember your old ex? Oh, he's the veterinarian now. Oh no, we're gonna go back in time! Okay, you know what? Sometimes I'm wrong. <sighs> I was really hoping they didn't do that, but here we are. Look, Henry got out just so he, she could get in back in touch with her ex. How about that? You think in this like freezy northern town, like that someone would have noticed that have been like, oh, it's cold in here. Oh, the front door is open. Like they didn't even need that scene of the door opening. They could have just come here and been like, oh. Oh no! Okay, now remember, I need to reiterate once again, she really, really loves that dog. <laughs> Let's keep that in mind as we watch this movie. All an hour and like 10 minutes of it. <laughs> Vanessa Lachey, excellent acting right there. Henry, where are you? I know dog owners who would like kill people to find their dog. It would be like Taken with Liam Neeson. I heard you. It's kind of her fault. Not her, hers. Vanessa Nathalie's. We were there. We have audio proof that we could hear grandma in the entryway and she just was not paying attention whatsoever for no reason. Why, because he's the veterinarian? What is he also, a dog whisperer? Does he? Wait, what resources does he have to find a missing dog? <laughs> he, ha he has a network of interconnected stray cats <laughs> that they get in contact with, and he just goes and he finds his he finds his agent, and he's like, "Hey, get in touch with the cats. We got a missing dog." Roger. <laughs> what resources does he have? <laughs> I really want to know. He has a drone with doggo vision. I love horses. Oh my god, can you imagine a movie like this, but instead of a dog, it's a missing horse? <laughs> Get it? Cut to the chase. Who's Henry? 
He's like the dog Superman. <laughs> There's a missing dog. I'm on my way. Rips off his shirt. <laughs> I love this movie already. Okay. This guy is a hunk. How is he still single? I mean, I know it's a Lifetime movie. He has to be. We haven't quite gotten to polyamory uh, Lifetime films. Hunky. Look at him. It looks like Henrik Lundqvist. He's like a detective. So how did the victim get out? Okay, and what's his favorite thing? Food? Okay, well, that knows it down. <laughs> oh, he knows Max. <laughs> it's what I do. What does he do? <laughs> He locates lost dogs like his Batman. He's awkward. No wonder he's still single. That was partially sarcasm. Because he is a hunk who loves animals. He could probably cook a mean souffle too. Missing dog. Okay, you know what? That's actually, in this day and age, that's actually a pretty reasonable thing to do. Here, let's post them. Let's post. Okay, why aren't they posting? Okay, this is where the film gets hilarious. She loves that dog. Okay, well, we've got a plan. Let's put it on social media and, like, all the city Facebook groups and see. Okay, well, why aren't they doing that? They're just sitting here <laughs> looking at photos. <laughs> they have the most nonchalant attitude to a dog being missing. And, like, most of the dog owners I know, they would cross the river sticks if it meant finding their lost dog and these people are like oh here let's reminisce it gets better don't worry all of this is like non helpful information that's good info but like no one knows how old he is or no one cares when you got him He is a yellow lab. They actually did spectacular casting on the breed of dog because Labradors don't have that thing in their brains that tell them to stop eating. So Labradors generally are chunks. Remember that scene in uh, Billy Madison? You get your ass out there and you find that fucking dog. <laughs> Why aren't they doing that? They're just falling in love. <laughs> <laughs> when they should be trying to find this dog. There you go. Oh, look, they're on social network. <laughs> not Facebook, not even MySpace. Oh, yeah, we're just going to go on socialnetwork.com. She loves that dog. Vanessa Lachey's character loves that dog, and she could not care less. Like, do they think that he's, like, David Bowie? David Bowie. <laughs> Is that the wrong... Jim Bowie. Who's the... <laughs> David Bowie, the, the American frontiersman, yes. Who was the... Was it Jim Bowie? With the Bowie knife guy? I'm... Te I, I live in Texas. I should know that. Did they, they think the dog is like Jim Bowie and, like, he can take care of himself out there. He's out there, like, constructing a house as we speak. He won't die from exposure at all. He can protect himself from a... F we already know there's a pack of coyotes running around. Oh, she's about to make partner soon, all right. <laughs> oh, yes. P. 
peeing on every one of them, I'm, I'm sure. Dude, it's like legendary. That freaking lock on her door. It's like, it's like local folklore at this point. Oh, <laughs> it's that lock. He's probably peeing on him too. That wouldn't be very lifetime movie of you though. I think it's because there's a lot of trees to pee on. On Christmas Eve, eh, seven years ago. Christmas Eve one? Are we going to go through all the Christmas Eves? Look, she hasn't aged a day. She hasn't aged a day. They should have done like CGI, like de-aging. Look at her. She clearly does not want to hold her hands. She's like, oh no. <laughs> She's literally reaching over and like taking them. Look, they de-aged the dog. Again, excellent casting on Yellow Lab because they all look the same. <laughs> no matter what, like, it's easy to cast de-aged Labradors. He has an age today, although I can buy that. He's like an Adonis, this man. In veterinary sciences? Dude, he was a hot ass nerd, man. He's smart. He's freaking hot as hell. He can probably make a mean souffle. He loves animals. How was this guy single? Because he was waiting on Vanessa Lachey, that's why. I'm the doggo Superman lady. You don't kick a dog in front of me. Also, there's just a random yellow lab puppy running around. It looks like he's bored. He's teething. What's that supposed to mean? I don't know how to hold a puppy. Well, you are a human being. What does that mean? No, see, they're talking about... Okay, you know what? Maybe she doesn't really love the dog, because clearly the dog is a symbol for their, like, affection and budding love for one another. The dog is a representation of their relationship. Maybe she couldn't care less about the dog. She just keeps the dog around because she imagines it's Nick over there. Max, whatever his name is. Max, I was right. Wow. No, I said Nick. It's Max. Who's Nick? Why was I thinking Nick? See, they're just talking, they're just talking past the dog to themselves. That is a big ass puppy dog. There's just a missing yellow lab just running around. What the hell? Look, he's, he's the dog detective. <laughs> See, Henry's watching him. Why is he running away? Follow the trail of P. See again, the dog is a symbol for their relationship. All she wants for Christmas is him. She wants hunk, she wants hunks McGee wrapped up for Christmas. That's what she wants. <laughs> then she wants to unwrap him. I 
again, they're trying to find the love of her life dog, and, like, they're doing it in the most nonchalant way possible. They're just, like, strolling along. Oh, remember this? Remember this? There's a dog out there. Find him. There are coyotes. Is this Bainesville's most romantic spot, really? Who's Marianne? Uh-oh. I don't think I see her in the credits. Oh no, there she is. She's gonna show up at some point. I'm not jealous. And we're kind of just strolling through the town talking about the past instead of actually trying to find this dog. How did that thing get off of his collar? Oh wait, that is his collar. I thought it was his leash. How did he get his collar off unless it got stuck on something? I guess his name was Chunks. Oh my god. I, okay, so, like I said, I've only seen bits and pieces of this. Also, this was made for television as seen by the ad breaks. <laughs> um, uh, I've only seen bits and pieces of this. I don't know how this ends. So, I don't know. Maybe the dog is Santa or something. And look, they're going for a leisurely... What the hell, man? Look, look for the dog. Also, for a veterinarian who is like the superhero of animals, he should not at all be taking a carriage ride because the horses that they quote-unquote employ for that job are treated atrociously. There goes Henry. Got to get him into the movie somehow. See, like, the dog is, like, omnipotent. He knows what he's doing. He's trying to get them together. Christmas Eve 2. Got five more to go. Where's the dog? Oh, he's in there with him. She's like, oh, <laughs> the old hickory. Remember what we did there for New Year's? <laughs> we sprung in the New Year. <laughs> I got him. No oh boy, here we go. Oh, good. I was like, turn away, carriage driver. He's wasting time. He must have paid the driver a lot of money. The time is money. And they're wasting a lot of it. Isn't it a bit too early to talk about that? Or apparently not. She was kind of into it. Oh, Tess made that. Remember? I thought he was talking about the inscription on the front, and she just opened it and completely ignored it. Okay, so he brought up the idea of family, because he's clearly interested in asking her to marry him, right? So why did he get it engraved with her married name, her non-married name? Her, there's a word for that, maiden name. Oh, it wouldn't be a Lifetime movie if it wasn't about rich white people. Well, rich, rich white uh, Filipino people.
What was that? Is that negotiable? Oh, yeah, it is. Have you seen me, honey? All we have to do is find a female real estate agent and we'll be solid. She would move heaven and earth for these, these eyes. Henry should be like, I want in on this too, hug me. I'm adorable. Yeah, that was ADR horse Winnie, by the way. <laughs> Are they not even going to thank the carriage driver? They just got out and started walking away. Not a thank you, no tip, no nothing. They didn't even go and like scritch the horse ear. Is there a dog you have to find right now? I mean, it was pretty okay. I mean, I'm assuming the night... That Christmas Eve night was, like, what really spiced it up, right? <laughs> Did you guys find Henry? No, we just took a luxurious carriage ride through the forest. <laughs> Tess was probably actually out looking, and these two freaking dopes are just <laughs> strolling through the woods. Oh my god, do they know that Matt, that Henry is omnipotent? He's the god dog? I don't know, but it's certainly not looking for a dog. A Dog God Christmas actually is a better title. I remember when I saw the title for this was Christmas Unleashed. It makes sense because the dog is unleashed. But it, Christmas Unleashed sounds like a superhero film. Which granted, this guy is the dog superhero. But still. Christmas Unleashed. That sounds like the Avengers of Hollywood life, or of Lifetime Movie Network. Like all of the, the hundreds of actors who have been on these films like come together in the biggest uh, crossover event of the millennia. Although... In front of Marianne, and we can just start making out, make her jealous. Because women. A woman wrote this, by the way. I was going to say, are they? I love how Christopher Russell, the guy who's playing Max, I love how his direction this entire movie seems to just be, okay, just stand there and look cute. <laughs> That's pretty much all he's done the whole movie. Like, no emoting. He's just, yeah, just look cute. See, look at him. Stand there and look cute. <laughs> That's all he's doing. She also made that bag. Why didn't you take it with you? Look, <laughs> just look cute. Deliver your line, but just look cute. <laughs> Is 
Is he related to Kurt Russell? No, I don't think so. It would be in his personal details if it was. Hey, I'm taller than him. Oh, he was in, he, oh, he, oh, he was in Yellowstone. Yellowstone Romance. <laughs> 2022 TV movie. Oh. I, I, think he's, I think he's found his niche. Oh. Get it? That's a phrase. The mistletoe secret. Love and glamping. Oh my, what? <laughs> I think I know what we have to watch next. He he hip hops from uh, Lifetime and Hallmark, and that's nature. Wait, love and glamping. Original title, Nature of Love. Is this a normal occurrence? The A Hallmark Channel original movie, Nature of Love. That's the movie poster, but they've changed the name to Love and Glamping. Is that what all of these directors do? They make the films for TV and then they change the names so that nobody recognizes their work? Is this like the new, uh, uh, who was the, the director name that people used when they didn't want to be associated? I thought of it the other day and I can't remember it now. Something Smitty, Walter Smitty. Poor Chunks. Oh, see, look cute. A woman wrote this, by the way. <laughs> this is like a trope I would expect from like a male writing women characters. Oh yeah, women, jealous of each other. Let them fight over the man. That's a very not reasonable thing to ask at this moment. When you know your when you know your your future girlfriend. Yeah, look, oh, see how jealous she is. Well, that wasn't 4 years. Oh my god. Oh my god. He is I wasn't expecting Lynn manuel Miranda to show up in this. Does he know? <laughs> Did they have to call him up and get permission? Hi, we want you in Christmas Unleashed. Soon to be a duck on Christmas. We're going to change the title. Not her dog. Because she, she doesn't give a crap about the dog. That was fast. Someone has some mad Photoshop skills. Shit, I'd head back to New York City with frickin' Vanessa Lache Lachey. Hell yeah. Do it, Max. There'd be a lot of work in New York for you, bud. Be a lot of money, a lot of smaller animals. <laughs> Look at him, all he's doing is standing there walking and cheesing. I don't know what any of that means. <laughs> Just walking, look cute. <laughs> That's his only direction. No, oh, I've been there. Screw those brooms, I got the Museum of Modern Art. 
She's got the Guggenheim. Overrated. Even now he's like smirking when he did that. He can't like not be attractive. Look at this man, the gall of this man to put himself on film knowing he's irresistible to all. Oh, hi mom. I wonder if it's, I wonder, that's not a Google or a Samsung or an iPhone. I wonder if that's smartphone. <laughs> oh, what operating system do you have? Oh, smartphone. <laughs> You could hang some flyers at my house. He's the Superman dog. He's the dog Superman. He can't stop with Superman. When when Zod was sending missiles from Russia to the United States to obliterate the world in Cold War, you, Superman, do you think he would have gone and hung out with Lois Lane? No, he went and got those missiles and threw them into the sun or whatever he did in Superman 4. Max has his collar back on. Did nobody uh, did nobody notice that in the editing room? He he's lost his collar. Unless he really is the god dog. Like I'm not even kidding. I've spent like half of this film right now like trying to figure out what I'm going to title this for the podcast. Christmas Unleashed, parentheses, or a dog on Christmas. Again, I just want to remind you guys that their dog is, her dog is missing. I was about to say how much time we have left. But, I mean, I don't really have to if they're going to, they're counting down to... Christmas Eve 7. We're pregnant. You probably shouldn't stand next to your man and say, well, I have an announcement to make. All smiles because that everyone's thinking, oh, she's pregnant. Wow, well, even she wants her son to leave. <laughs> oh, conflict. But the one time that actor doesn't smile, it's when his mom shows up. <laughs> He's like, oh. <laughs> Domestic jokes. It's funny. Oh, <laughs> checking her out. Yeah, that Marianne bitch got out of his life soon enough. Gee, thanks, Mom. What does that even mean? <laughs> I've seen her before in other things. I 
Every, the whole town's talking about you. Yeah, Henry is he's he he's omnipotent. I just want to remind you that their, her dog is missing right now. They could not care less. <laughs> They're just having a good old Christmas without him. <laughs> oh, remember we've got to we've got to leave and advance the plot. Remember that. <laughs> I can't wait for the scene where they're like sitting fireside about to like start making out and they're like, oh, hang on, we've got to go and find the dog. <laughs> oh my god, I almost forgot. <laughs> ah, it's funny. God, that woman really wants them to get together. Oof. She's landed on thick. It's never too late to try to find your dog. Subtle mom. I think she just wants to see the babies that those two will make. <laughs> she's into animal husbandry and she's like, oh, the genetics between these two people. Oh. Oh, hang on, we gotta hang out here again. Oh my god, did they really just tape it to- I mean, I guess that's better than nailing it to the tree, but... Is that it? I don't know how long that's gonna hold. Christmas Eve 4! Labs love the water. It's a good thing they it's a good thing they're very much adhering to the tell don't show rule. Good job. Where did this come from? They haven't been competitive up until now, and now oh we're competitive and not finding their damn dog. Look at him. Like, did you see him smooth out his hair? Oh, I gotta look good. Oh, look, they weren't bolt. They weren't just blowing smoke up their asses. They are actually looking out for the dog. Wow. I like how everyone else is more like wanting to find the dog. Tess, the grandmas. Everyone is more interested in finding that dog than these two, and one of them is the owner. <laughs> This was the scene, by the way, where I started, like, noticing the movie. I was like, oh, yeah, this is a movie. What kind of grandmas would we be? Oh, maybe they don't care about the dog. He looks like the guy from NCIS. Mark Harmon. Oh, Steve. A woman wrote this, by the way. It's a very much uh, like a male-dominated scene right there. <laughs> Come on, you two hens. <laughs> the rooster is strutting his stuff. That actually sounded like an actual alert on an iPhone. 
Is it Max? Oh my god, is there a new lead? He knows you're watching, because he's the god dog. Like, this movie is not at all, like, based on realism at all. Oh my god, here's the scene, I think. <laughs> we gotta get... <laughs> Max was like... Or Hen Henry was like, Oh, we gotta get them in bed somehow. Here, let me just go to his house. <laughs> They'll have to go there together and sit by the fire and drink wine and not try to find me. How far away does he live? It was like noon. Well, you better start looking. It'd be a real shame if he was that close by and they decided to not look for him and instead go inside and like start smooching on the couch. It's a good thing Henry can read. He probably knew who was invited there. Oh, Henry's house. That's my place. He really is Dog Superman. Henry is eight, eight, eight minutes away from your house. Do you think you want to go and try to find him? Lupe. I'm assuming the Chihuahua is Lupe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It was the Chihuahua. <laughs> How is this? This is like the perfect man. Except for the fact that he's not trying to find the damn Henry dog. He loves dogs so much he owns. He patented a machine just so he could finance his dog rescue. And the last thing on his mind is do rescuing dogs with this woman in front of him. He could not care less about dogs. <laughs> He's a very bad dog rescuer. <laughs> we'll do laps every hour. <laughs> Your dog is missing. Oh yeah, we'll do laps every freaking hour. Isn't this the last place you should be if you've got cameras? You'll hear you're here 24/7 with those cameras. Oh, that's a South Park reference. I was going to say, he's, got, he's about to have a lot more dogs to rescue. <laughs> there, are, there are dog owners in my life, people I know personally, they would not eat until they found their dog. Again, refer to the beginning of this movie. She loves that dog. That dog chooses her scarf every morning. And here she is, baking a cake. What on earth? And look at Mr. McHunkerston. I mean, I understand why she couldn't care less about the dog when she's got that piece of man meat in front of her. But damn, there's a dog. I was I was hoping like the fact that they're doing everything they could not to find this dog. I thought I I was hoping it would be funny, but this movie is kind of running a bit long. Like you can only do that so long before it just gets boring. It's not helping my overall enjoyment of this film. Like if this was like an hour long special with commercials meaning it's like 45 minutes, that'd be awesome, but they've got to make it run like 30 minutes longer. I guess it's not all that boring because the two lead actors are attractive as all fuck. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, I guess that's the 
if I can say this properly, I guess that's the hallmark of a good Lifetime movie. I went there. Oh. Mama Rosa. Rosa. Make time. Oh, that's my kind of man right there. Yeah, boy. Her dog is missing, by the way. <laughs> I know I'm saying that every scene, but I mean, every scene they're finding ways not to find the dog. It's a good thing they are putting, they are putting Henry in scenes, one, so that we know that he's omnipotent and nothing bad's gonna happen to him. Two, I guess to just get the dog in the movie because the movie is called Christmas Unleashed and or A Dog on Christmas, so there has to be a dog. But I like how they just keep cutting it. Because, like, if they if the dog was gone and we never saw him, it would just be like, oh, my God, he got eaten by the coyotes. <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, here's this scene. Oh, 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 oh. No, is it getting hot in here? Or is it just them? Oh. Oh, yeah, roll it back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think I spoke a bit too soon. <laughs> I guess you could say my opinion about this movie dragging was a, a little bit premature. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, get it. Oh, my God. Oh. I gotta find that dog. <laughs> She was about to find something else. <laughs> I'm sorry, rediscover something. Oh, that was oh, he's totally that was a hit on her. Uh, I don't think so. Here, get this done so you can get back here and you've got a whole hour. Oh, is this where they're sitting in front of the fireplace? No. <laughs> she was about to trip on something when she was rolling that dough. Oh yes. Oh, tree root. She's not very good at listening to anybody. And she's a lawyer? Maybe her brain turns off when she's not listening to an argument. <laughs> you were just out here on that carriage. Maybe that carriage ride ended up in the same cutting room floor as that scene where Henry was still wearing his frickin' collar. You're the only lights I need. Oh, here we go. The one time, the dog is not in this movie at all. We're gonna get coyote, oh my God, is a coyote gonna eat Lupe? Max is just chilling with his bros. He's right there. Turn your head, he's right there. I thought they were going to find out the dog barks, and they're here in the next scene. The dog is not in this movie, like, for 40 minutes, and all of a sudden he comes out of nowhere just to be a cock block. What a man's best friend, am I right? Am I right? Urcaloni? Urcaloni. The glasses or the wine? I like how he clearly has been through France because he's drinking out of that wine glass properly. And this dumb lawyer from New York. <laughs> She's, oh here, let me get my hand all up on this wine. 
Was that a legitimate detail? Like, the, I'm assuming the director was not probably privy to that, seeing as how she apparently wanted nothing to do with this film after it was filmed and produced. Or, like, maybe the actor was just like, oh, yeah, I know how to hold a wine glass. Did he just say you're a great dog mama? No, she's not. She's not even looking for him. She's more interested in falling in love with an ex-boyfriend than she is finding her damn dog, who's been in the, who's been with her through thick and thin. He went with her to New York, actually. Wow, he sounds like a great companion. Why aren't you out looking for him? Wow. <laughs> I'm letting him down by sitting here not looking for him. <laughs> Good God. Good dog. This was the scene. This was the scene I was like, oh my freaking Lord, this movie's amazing. I'm letting down my dog by sitting here trying to get some instead of trying to find my dog. He's Superman. I mean, it is a calling. That implies it's religious, but there is a god dog in this movie. <laughs> His calling was given to him by Henry. It's all, it's all full circle. Oh, he's hitting on her bad. Okay, that's not what he means, you dummy. He's talking about a wife, kids... He was kind of wanting to get started on the kids part too when they were rolling out that dough. See, look at her. She was checking him out right there. Okay, I was I I thought she said Graham when I looked at the subtitle. Yeah, this movie has subtitles, believe it or not. I I, I could find them on the internet. Um, I, I was like, oh, does she mean the gram, like Instagram? No, they can't do that. They don't even have Facebook on here. They have social network. Mark Harmon could not care less. That's not Mark Harmon, by the way. Hello, it's me. I mean, he probably has a lot. He's a dog rescue. He was trying to be in something a little bit ago. I don't think it was the moment. Yeah, and he seems so enthused about that, Mom. Nobody could care less about the dog. Henry's out there fending off coyotes with this friggin'... That's the movie I want to see. Henry with this little ragtag group of ragamuffin dogs out fighting the frickin' coyote gang. That's the movie Lifetime didn't want to put on TV. That would have been too bothered. That would have been Christmas Unleashed. No wonder they changed the name. Oh look, he kept her textbook. Why? I mean, I guess it's sentimental, but... So, uh, how's those bulls coming? <laughs> you never came back outside. You just decided to just rifle through my things? Ugh. 
That looks like a lot more than 50 pages. Oh. Oh, he's had his moments in this movie. Except to New York. Oh, was she talking about the dog? I didn't keep you. <clears throat> Christmas Eve 6. No, 4. 5. You've got to put it on screen. There you go. I guess 5 and 6 and 7 were in New York, so those don't count. This is the last one. Oh, I'm going to do so many peas. Was that a squirrel? I think I saw a squirrel scurrying across the screen. They were so impressed with my year internship. Good boy. I mean, it was at the bottom of the list, but I mean, hey, it, it helps me make my decision. Do you? I would. Why? Oh. Hmm. What? How much money does he got going to veterinarian school? I don't think it's being stubborn when you've literally bought a house here. <laughs> oh God. Oh, there's his collar that he lost, had back on, and then I guess lost again. The dog is missing, by the way. Wow, we're getting some, like, character emotion here. I wish we could hear what they're talking about. It might be, like, an emotionally charged scene where we can feel for the characters, but no, we gotta listen to this. We're just gonna completely ignore that. Come on now, come on. There was a movie I watched where they did that. I was like, oh wow, it's an emotional part. And they like did something else. And I was like, oh, we're not even gonna get to see it. A <laughs> great directing choice. Okay, here's the relate. Here's the couple. We're just gonna pan over to the Christmas tree and pan back out. <laughs> You gotta carry her to bed, bro. Come on. You said you were smooth.
I guess Lifetime didn't really spring for uh, the best music either. Henry is a dedicated wing dog, though. He decided to spend the night out in the freezing cold, sheltered only by a tree, instead of going back home just so these two could get together. This dog is the biggest tease. He's right there, Max! Just look! Oh, look, he put a dog treat on the tree. Was it really? Is this the 25th? All he had to do was turn around. Also, you see that? You see that wooden? I think it's a cross. You see that wooden thing in the background? It was standing up straight last night. And now it's knocked over. What were they up to? <laughs> they must have been doing, they must have been up to something. Oh, come on. Neither of you were even looking yesterday. I find that hard to believe. Not even a raccoon. Oh, wow. It only took us an hour for her to come to that conclusion. Yeah, here, let's pass out missing dog flyers to a party that nobody's leaving all day. Here, have you seen this dog? Oh, well, no, but I'll look around the house. <laughs> I do like his little goblet of garlic cloves over there. It's pretty swank. Maybe he wasn't as good as I was expecting him to be. I thought he was the kind of guy that she would like drag herself from New York to this little podunk town just to get with him. <laughs> I want it, please! <laughs> please! <laughs> Take me back! <laughs> Aww. She gets full custody. They implied earlier they were going to try like a long distance thing, but that was only for her internship, I guess. So now that it's full time, they're like, oh, well, we're not even going to try. Well, hurry up and make a decision. We got like 10 minutes left.
Ah, get it! It's the Yule dog. There was a glitch in my copy. I, I feel it's okay to admit that I found this copy on the internet. <laughs> there was a glitch. So hopefully everything is still timed right. I'm 99% certain that there's not a Blu-ray out there that I could have bought of this. You can't even watch it on the Lifetime website. I'm assuming we're correct because the subtitles are still accurate. She should never have come back to town. Stupid, sexy Max. You would look different with Max draped around you. I've become so numb, I can't feel you. Oh, cause she could feel him the other night. Ooh. Oh, here we go. Also, the movie glitched again, so hopefully, I don't know how this is working. Because he wanted to stay in town. Wow, this is convenient. Frickin' Bainesville. He reveled in being the dog Superman. Yeah, times have changed. All the kids are on their Oculus rifts. Or their metaverse things, whatever they're called now. Wow, she has she has built her entire career on this single idea. And now that she knows that that idea was a lie this whole time, you'd think there'd be more of an earth-shattering revelation than this. But I mean, I guess they've got to wrap the movie up. You, oh, here's our montage. Remember all these things? Oh. They are trying to pad out the movie, I guess. Even though it was clearly made for TV. You don't really have to pad it out, do you? Merry Christmas. Oh, remember that lovely memory of them taping the flyer to the tree? How romantic. Now can I survive without you, Neil? No. Oh. Okay, that scene is even better. <laughs> Without the notification sound, because it looks like something completely different happened. <laughs> See, the wooden thing is up, and it got knocked off at some point during the night. That scene where they're rolling the dough is way better when the notification is inaudible. <laughs> oh my god. That was the best thing ever. You know, Derryville puts on a good Christmas parade. I'll give them that. Bainesville, whatever it's called. A yellow lab. 
He's got some himbo in him yet. <laughs> Have you? Yeah, we've been chasing them all the way to the kitchen where we frickin' did something and we chased them all the way to the bed. Get it? It's a metaphor for their relationship. I will give the writer Sarah Ensley credit for for writing to her pay grade. <laughs> it took them an hour and 20 minutes to come to these conclusions. What are we doing trying to rekindle romance? We should be out searching for that dog. Whoa! Where's he been? They got all the hunky men for this film. They went all out. Oh, it's Henry! Yeah! He waited in the wings until everyone was reunited. What a good boy. I like how they ADR'd the dog whining like he missed them and like, oh, I'm so happy, even though he's been freaking, like, watching them the whole damn time, working them like puppets. Oh, he's gonna lead them right to Becca. That is a pretty small town. That is a pretty, comma, small town, not pretty small. I'd recognize that bark anywhere. Okay, you shouldn't ADR the dog whines in, because that implies that the dog was not behind this series of unfortunate events the whole damn time, and he was! Oh. Oh shit, I didn't know this was North Carolina. Good god. I thought this was like upstate New York. What the hell? Okay, so that completely reorients my perception of things. I was like, yeah, you could just come up here on the weekends. Nope. <laughs> Can't do that. This is North Carolina, bitch. Did they explain that earlier and I just wasn't paying attention? That's a very, very distinct possibility. Wait, who's the main character? Becca. So how come on IMDb for A Dog Gone Christmas, original title Christmas Unleashed one day later, one year later, when Marla's dog runs away on Christmas Eve, why is it Marla and not Becca? Oh, she pregnant. Can she not drink espresso if you're pregnant? Oh, it's two dogs. Look at Henry, he wants nothing to do with them. He's like, fuck those pups. <laughs> I'm Get rid of them. I'm trying to save them from the, whenever they run away and you don't try to find them. I'm trying to save them from that trauma. Merry Christmas. The whole movie was centered around Henry and he's not even on the final shot. What the hell? Come on now. Yeah, Becca. Why the hell does AMDB say her name is Marla? This whole film is out of this world. 
Oh my goodness. Well, anyway, that was Christmas Unleashed. Or a dog on Christmas, one or the other. It has a 5.7 on IMDb based on 450. You know what? For for what it is and what it's supposed to be, I guess 5.7 is appropriate. Uh, since we're on IMDb, I don't normally do this. Um, it ranked higher with older females. Probably because it had Max in it. He's a freaking hunk of dunk. Um, do they have? Oh, user reviews. Is that the. Yeah, Love at Christmas. Lifetime's Christmas films are very inconsistent. There are some surprisingly good ones, while regardless of the predictability, they manage to succeed in being lighthearted, blah, 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 blah. But also some failures where the characters are not likable, everything is forced and shallow with implausibility. <laughs> oh, wow. Christmas Unleashed is neither one of the surprisingly good Lifetime Christmas films or one of the failures. I mean, I guess that's appropriate, Little Songbird. Um, it was. It's a very run-of-the-mill kind of thing. It kind of drags in the middle, but then we get that scene where they're cooking something up in the kitchen, and it's like, oh. Well, we found out at the end that they were literally cooking up something. Oh. Um, nice telling of their story. <laughs> Dr. Smooth Love. Boring, boring, boring. Uh, Christmas Unleashed at least has a great title that they changed. <laughs> Two, one of two films featuring Christopher Russell as Max as a hot guy. <laughs> Apparently, one of two films. Apparently, he did another Lifetime movie. The plot is a bit strange. Um, Becca stays with her grandmother because her parents are dead. The movie does this without any justification, and the plot point is quickly dropped. It was almost as if it was put into the script for its cheap sentimentality. At least Dr. Smoothlove understands what a Lifetime movie is. Um... Hang on, does he say anything about the, uh, um, apparently Russell did a better job at Hallmark's Mistletoe Secret. Um, at least there he got to be a movie jerk. Here he is just a hot guy who is too handsome to have remained single for as long as he has. <laughs> Henry is sort of found several times. At some po at one point they see him on security footage and don't go after him. <laughs> They even use, quote, Christmas magic, unquote, to explain it. I didn't catch that. Uh, only a moron like me doing a Christmas movie challenge should watch it. Well, I guess technically doing it for a podcast is about on the same level as a Christmas movie challenge. Overacting ham. Uh, even Vanessa and N Nana and a cute dog can't save this one. Christmas Eve romance. Winter storm boring. Uh, rekindling a romance over a missing dog. Simply awful. Hotness and doggies. <laughs> uh, this one review, they actually try to make it seem like there was a moral finding your calling and the importance of life. I mean, I guess technically, yes, but okay. Um, so yeah, that was um, a doggone Christmas Unleashed dog. Christmas Unleashed. A doggone Christmas Unleashed. That might be the title. Uh... <laughs> Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I had a blast for the most part. Like I said, it kind of dragged in the middle. But I, I enjoyed it for good good badness. I don't know if I would ever watch it. It's not like The Room where you can rewatch it. I think once you watch it, you're good. Um, but yeah, definitely add it to your Christmas rotation. Add, watch it with some friends. It'll probably be a lot more entertaining with some friends. Especially if you're drunk on eggnog. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.